first, uh, what is INSDC? Well, uh, INSDC stands uh, for International Nucleotide Sequence Database Collaboration. And you can check uh, the legal or formal definition of INSDC at this website, www.insdc.org. It consists of three institutes. One is us, DDBJ in Japan, and another is NCBI, a National Center for Biotechnology Information in the United States under NIH, National Institute of Health. And the last uh, node is ENA, European Nucleotide Archive at EBI, European Bioinformatics Institute. So this is uh, the collaboration uh, between three bioinformatics institutes. And uh, INTC has been well known uh, for its management of nucleotide sequence information in collaboration with academic journals. In fact, uh, INTC uh, do not ask uh, researchers to deposit their data uh, by themselves, but it is the journal publishers that ask all researchers uh, to deposit data to one of INSDC nodes upon publication of scientific papers. And why uh, those journal publishers mandate researchers to deposit their data? Basically, it is for scientific integrity. In order to reproduce scientific data, all researchers need to be able to access to the original data, original information. And it is us, INCDC, that takes uh, responsibility of accepting and preserving those data from all researchers worldwide. And there are not only one, but multiple databases uh, that are managed under this collaboration. At DDBJ, we provide, as you can see in this table, sequence read archive or SRA for next generation reads. And DDBJ has traditional data for assembled sequences and biosample for biospecimen and bioproject for research projects. I will describe these databases more in detail later. And uh, EMBRI-EBI, uh, European side, uh, likewise, uh, provides a collective database named European Nucleotide Archive, or ENA. NCBI counterparts in the, United, United, in the United States are uh, categorized into four, uh, just like the DBJ, Sequence Read Archive for NGS and GenBank for Assembled Sequences, and Biosample and Bioproject. And at these three institutes, there are professional curators. Those curators communicate with all researchers worldwide to guide their submission, uh, raw and basic data, uh, to use uh, standardized format and language uh, upon submission. Well, um, among them, bioproject and biosample are what we call metadata repository. Metadata refer to uh, abstract information uh, describing data status. And bioproject, as I said, describes research project details, such as the funding information or aim of the research and research members, project members. And biosample uh, is also a metadata repository for biospecimen. For each biosample you use, for example, extracted DNA or extracted RNA, for each sample, you need to register its metadata in the biosample database. So the number of biosample connected to one bioproject can be very many. For example, in a recent large scale research project, there can be thousands of or even more biosample information connected to one big bioproject. And these databases 
bio project and bio sample are very important in terms of convention on biological diversity because these are the very metadata that describe sampling information or bioresource information. For example, where those resources are collected and when. And actually, since the last year, INSDC mandates such record information, sampling time and geolocation in biosample records. And we will demand this information uh, in the future for all data submission. The next major database uh, now is SRA, Sequence Read Archive. And SRA was initially named after a uh, short read archive uh, because next generation sequencing uh, began with short read sequences like Illumina. But now there are many long read sequences. So the repository name SRA is stands for uh, currently sequence read archive. And in this sequence read archive, uh, sequence reads from NGI sequences are recorded together with the quality values. And of course, for each uh, sequence record, um, its associated biosample and project information are recorded. The third category is what we call traditional repository or traditional data. And at DDBJ, the database, it's, database itself is named DDBJ. And at NCBI, it's called GenBank. And at Embry EBI, it is called ENA. And these repositories uh, receive annotated sequences. Annotation indicates, for example, where the exons and introns are, or what kind of amino acid sequences are translated. And such details uh, are coordinately, coordinatedly uh, registered, described and registered at one of these repositories. In other words, if you want to submit your own data, you can deposit at any node. You can access to uh, the United States, Europe, or Japan, whichever you want, and we share all submitted sequences. There are additional important repositories operated at DDBJ, NCBI, and EBI. Very well known are microarray data or transcriptome data. And at NCBI, array data are, or transcriptome data are registered at GEO, Gene Expression Omnibus. In Europe, a similar repository uh, was established and it is called Array Express. And at DDBJ, we recently set up our own repository named Genomic Expression Archive or GEA. At each node, um, data metadata description and data, data format are slightly different. So we are not fully exchanging information, but for these repositories, uh, three institutes uh, collaborate to exchange minimum information, such as metadata. For human genomes, uh, each institute has its own repository. At NCBI, there is dbGaP for personal genotype and phenotype information. In Europe, EGA or European Genome Phenome Archive provides the similar function for personal genomes. And in Japan, we have our JGA or Japanese Genotype Phenotype Archive. You can see that these names are slightly different, uh, although they have very similar acronyms. But historically, um, this is the result of our collaboration. First, uh, personal genomes are not exchanged. Yeah. It is important that we keep 
personal information within each country or within European Union. So we only exchange statistical records and IDs, not raw sequence information. And from such personal genomes, uh, by comparing each genome with a reference genome, we can identify single nucleotide polymorphisms and also structural variations in each genomes. Such identified polymorphisms and also variations are registered in different databases. At NCBI, dbSNP and dbBAR take care of such uh, nucleotide changes. And in Europe, EVA or DGBA uh, function uh, for this purpose. In Japan, we have not established our own JBAR repository, but in collaboration with DBCLS, another research institute uh, within the same larger organization I will describe later, we provide Togo bar for human genome variations. Altogether, um, these data, we exchange uh, metadata for these databases and form what we call international collaboration as INSDC. And this collaboration has been how? Uh, receiving spotlights in the perspective of CBD or Convention on Biological Diversity, because we are providing all kinds of information for free without any restriction, except for human genomes. And currently, we provide more than 200 million annotated sequences. And uh, altogether, in the sum of three institutes, we host 10 to 15 million users worldwide. And of course, these users can use our resources for free without any login or registration. For this easiness of access, uh, we support more than 99.5% of downstream sequence databases. And those downstream databases are now called secondary databases. The cumulative open access data content at INCDC, and the cumulative sum of uh, what we share exceeds 20 petabytes now. So um, we are exchanging updates of these 20 petabytes regularly every day uh, between three institutes. And we try to keep the same information at all sites so that users can search information at any site, either DDBJ, e, uh, EBI, or NCBI. And why such complete copy is necessary? Because data integration is necessary for providing same services and also to verify novelty or similarity of newly obtained sequences. If you obtain a new sequence, and if you want to check whether it contains already known sequence, then you need to search that particular sequence against all known sequences. So typically the BLAST search is used, and this BLAST database needs to contain all sequences available so far. And such whole total sum is available or should be available uh, at multiple locations because we need to be prepared for uh, natural disasters or uh, other anomalies that can happen. So Japan, Europe, and the United States uh, share all information to as a backup for of, uh, each site. This global coordination is ever expanding and uh, actually, uh, INSTC nodes communicate with external data repositories. One well-known uh, particular resource is patent sequences. 
European Patent Office or EPO, US Patent and Trademark Office or USPTO, and Japan Patent Office and Korean Patent Office communicate with ISDC, and we publish uh, patent related sequences from these patent offices. This topic will be covered uh, on the last day by Dr. Aon. We also communicate with genome based surveillance communities, especially for COVID 19. EBI has established COVID 19 data portal, and this data portal uh, on the back end uh, communicates with EBI to search and retrieve SARS CoV 2 information. And this data portal also communicates with other data resources, such as infection rates and geographical distribution, and for in some countries uh, with medical records too. A similar genome-based surveillance is available for food microbiome in the United States. And US Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, provides genome tracker network for food security. Within this genome tracker framework, um, all kinds of microbial genomes uh, from food are registered. And this information is traced back in case of any uh, food insecurity uh, or uh, some ki kind of um, risk, um, uh, uh, some kind of accident. Similar genome tracking is now established for lifelong stress information in Europe. Please visit this early course website to check what kind of lifelong information is stored and made available to the public. So ISDC is uh, collaborating with multiple other communities to establish DNA sequence, DNA and RNA sequence standards and also capacity building. We also have regular meeting with how uh, developing large countries like China and India. Recently, upon uh, the request to join ISDC, uh, we are rapidly changing. As I said, we now mandate sampling time and geolocation information uh, to collaborate or to conform to the CBD requirement. And also, we are set to expand our collaboration beyond the United States and Europe and Japan. Specifically, we regularly communicate with China, Korea, and India. 